new insights into the origin of the Indo-European languages. And this is a map, you can see the circulation of uh, Europe and India and Asia. An international team of linguists and geneticists led by researcher from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, has achieved a significant breakthrough in our understanding of the origins of Indo-European, a family of languages spoken by nearly half of the world's population. The work is published in the journal Science Magazine. For 200 years, the origin of the Indo-European languages has been disputed. Two main theories have recently dominated this de debate. The Steppe Hypothesis, which proposes an origin in the Pontic Caspian steppe around 6,000 years ago, that's just uh, basically north of the Black Sea, and the Anatolian or farming hypothesis, that's uh, the coast of uh, west coast of uh, Turkey, suggesting an older origin tied to early agriculture around 9,000 years ago. Previous phylogenetic analysis of Indo-European languages have come to conflicting conclusions about the age of the family due to the combined eff effects of inaccuracies and inconsistencies in the data sets they used and limitations in the way that phylogenetic methods analyzed ancient languages. To solve these problems, researchers from the Department of Linguistic and Cultural Evolution at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology assembled an international team of over 80 languages specialists to construct a new data set of core vocabulary from 161 Indo-European languages, including 52 ancient or historical languages. And this more comprehensive and balanced sampling combined with rigorous protocols for coding lexical data rectified the problems in the data sets used by previous studies. Indo-European estimated to be around 8,100 years old. The team used recently developed ancestry-enabled Bayesian phylogenetic analysis to test whether ancient written languages such as classical Latin or Vedic Sanskrit were the direct ancestors of modern Romance and Indic languages respectively. Russell Gray, head of the Department of Linguistic and cultural evolution and senior author of the study, emphasized the care that they had taken to ensure that their inferences were robust. He said, our chronolo chronology is robust across a wide range of alternative phylogenetic models and sensitivity analysis. He says, these analyses estimate the Indo-European family to be approximately 8,100 years old, with five main branches already split off by around 7,000 years. These results are not entirely consistent with either the step or the farming hypothesis. The first author of the study, Paul Hegarty, observed that recent ancient DNA data suggests that the Anatolian branch of the Indo-European did not emerge from the steppe, but from further south in or around the northern arc of the Fertile Crescent, as that means around the Euphrates rivers, Tigris-Euphrates, as the earliest source of Indo-European family. Our language family tree topology and our lineage split dates point to other early branches that may also have spread directly from there, not through the steppe. New insights from genetics and linguistics. The authors of the study therefore proposed a new hybrid hypothesis for the origin of Indo-European languages with an ultimate homeland south of the Caucasus and a subsequent branch northwards into the steppe as a secondary homeland for some branches of Indo-European entering Europe with the later Yamnaya and Corded Ware associated expansions. Ancient DNA and language phylogenetics thus combine to suggest that the resolution to the 200-year-old Indo-European enigma lies in a hybrid of the farming and steppe hypothesis, said Gray. Wolfgang Hack, group leader of the Department of Archaeologists, Archaeogenetics at Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, says, aside from a refined, refined time estimate for the overall language tree, the tree topology and branching order are most critical for the alignment with key archaeological events and shifting ancestry patterns 
seen in the ancient human genome data. This is a huge step forward from the mutually exclusive previously scenarios towards a more plausible, mo plausible model that integrates archaeological, anthropological, and genetic findings. This is by, provided by Max Planck Society, Paul Hegarty and their colleagues on phys.org. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I really support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.